فأنا سعيد اليوم بتواجدي معكم وأسعد بهذه الانطلاقة المميزة للمؤتمر It's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker Dr. Nizar Bahabri He's a consultant of internal medicine and infectious diseases and he's the medical director at Samir Abbas Hospital in Jeddah He holds the American and Canadian boards in internal medicine and infectious diseases He's currently the president of the Saudi Society of Medical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases in the Western Province. حقيقة سعيدين جدا بتواجد الدكتور نزار اليوم وهو من أعلام التثقيف الطبي في وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي كان له جهود عظيمة خلال الجائحة في التثقيف فوظيف علينا عزيز. Welcome, Dr. Nizar, to the stage. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جاء وقت أن نشيل لكل المطعمين ألف مبروك. أعطيكم العافية. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. رب يشرح لي صدري ويسر أمري وحل الأقل فمن لساني يفقه قولي. First of all, I would like to thank the great, pleasant introduction. حقيقة to be with. intelligent internist, rheumatologist, the people who deal with the most uh, difficult situation, even when we wanted an infectious disease to look for a drug that can save us, Tosal Zamab did it. So thank you for uh, all the great work. It gives me a great pleasure to come and speak about sharing experiences between infectious disease and rheumatology. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to speak about something that you all know. This is, this is speaking like with rheumatologists about immunity, so I'm going to skip a lot of the biological things. And those ones, the one that you really pronounce better than me. I, I am so good in pronouncing Tosal map. I can say it a couple of times if you want, but I'm not good in pronouncing the other ones. So I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to speak about a very important thing that happens in my clinic. Is all rheumatologists, whenever they are seeing a patient, they describe the risk of having an infection related to starting any treatment that they want in rheumatology. And usually people come to my clinic freaking out. Because whatever you say, oh, I'm going to give you treatment. It's going to help you, but alhamdulillah, it will bring you hepatitis B, wa TB, wa HIV, wa mumkin sabib la kwaram, wa mumkin sabib People already come to me freaking out totally. And if the rheumatologist, the kind rheumatologist already did uh, TB screening and he's positive, this is even worse. Because uh, then the rheumatologist will tell the patient, well, you have this kind of risk to have TB. يعني يخرج ويقول أنا معدي أنا حاكحدم أهلي العدوى so and if he YouTube so some of my colleagues will say you will go to Nizar Bahabri and people will go into YouTube and they will find everything related to HIV. So they will do some screening for hepatitis, but they, they told him that you might have a virus. And everything in YouTube speaks about HIV. So I have people crying in my clinic before. Go, oh, Allah, my relation is only look. It is so bad. Yeah, it looks so bad when you send people to me. So calculating risk and knowing the risk of infection is really very important. And I would really people a lot of people when they have been sent with rheumatological disease, they usually ask me, should I get the treatment or I shouldn't? And I'm not a rheumatologist. But I will just say very simple. I always give them reassurance. I say, how is your life style? Are you suffering from this rheumatological disease? If he say yes, I tell him then, it's okay. You have a small risk, and I will take it with you. So I always try to reassure patients 
when I get a referral from a rheumatologist that if you need it, then take it because we all have risks per day. We ride a car, we have a risk in riding a car. If you are suffering from this disease, you have an infectious disease guy behind you and don't worry, let's start and I will take care of the infections. So I believe reassurance and risk stratification is a very important issue in taking care of a rheumatological disease. We'll speak first about Greek corticoids. As you know, a lot are still using it. Still in people who are not so specialized in rheumatology, they still use steroid for a long period of time, which really can lead to a lot of infection. It has been evaluated with, if you are dealing with DEMARDS, or if you are dealing with anti-TNF, if you add steroid to it and you continue steroid, the longer you use steroid, whatever you use, the higher the dose, the longer the duration, as you all know, it is unfortunate that we will have an increased risk of infection. So just remember, always reassure your patient that you will try your best to take care of them to get rid of steroid if it's needed because there is no doubt steroid by itself it will increase the risk of having this kind of infection. Then I, I'm sure that all of you the, know this review article from Nature uh, in 2017 that evaluated multiple, multiple bi uh, biological treatment and you can see I always look at very simple, who are my friends? And it looks like Tafa is my friend. I always try to remember the name. Tafa is very popular in the United So I always like this drug. I say it's the lowest, Tafa, and then I will let you complete the rest of the name. It is the lowest, no doubt, the lowest risk of reactivation and related to all, all your biological treatments. So if you are thinking about modalities, this is a very good drug to, to pick if you are getting a patient who is so worried about infections. Rate of serious infections, as you can see, it's a very simple graph. If you are using DMARDS, or anti-TNF agent, I just want you always, this is also a very good information, a review article for your patient. The more we use the drug with years, the less chance of reactivation. So this is also, I always reassure patient and say, you know, you are running at a risk of around less than 3%. And the more you use the drug, we will have very close follow up every three months for anything you want, any symptom that you want. In the first year, then second year, we will do six months. Third year, you will be at a risk of nearly like any normal individual. And this is also a very important information you can give to your patients so they can deal with the thought of infection while they are using uh, all of your biological treatments. Next, I'm really not sure how many of you or know about the rabbit uh, risk score. It is really useful. Sometimes I use it in my information. As you know, people are very educated nowadays and Google <laughs> really came to take over us. People can Google anything. And I believe that this is a very good thing that if you have a sophisticated tech guy looking like patient, it's really nice when they see that you are calculating the risk and you have a calculator. It's really very simple. It gives you the choices. It gives you the age. You will put risks and it will give you percentages of serious infection in the coming 12 months. I have used it. It's, I do not use it for everyone. I'm sure you all understand me. You have to see your patients. 
some patients will always, <laughs> I like to say, in TB, you will tell him, you have, and I always try to teach my resident to say the tone. So you always can say, well, Asma, the risk of having reactivation of TB is 7%. You go, Ya Allah, 7? You go, 7, just 7%. You go, but 7. So you have always to see which pronunciation you want to say. Would I say percent? I go, I go, I resident, please always say kida. جملة واضحة. فتقوم تقول لا يعني هي نسبة حدوثها سبعة في المية. إذا قل سبعة في المية تقوله لكن حنعالجها مية في المية حنعالجها. إذا قل بس سبعة في المية تقوله أجل عديها أبدأ الأنتي تي إن إف. so it depends كيف الناس يستقبل الرقم. so always try to look how people will take your risk and تبي لأنك لما تقول بس أربعة عشر تفرق عن والله طلع الريسك 14% he should die in your clinic okay so always you have to understand the numbers can really play a big role in it and what should we do next I'm sure you are all doing screening just to remind everyone there is the latent TB it's very obvious please do not get into the hole of people asking you من في جبتها and we never had a patient with TB. خلاص. I don't know. And I always tell them, always pick Riyadh. Say, have you ever gone to Riyadh? Because it's the easiest for people to go. To go show if you go to Riyadh, and there is one person with TB and he coughed, ninety-five percent of people will get infected, including the captain. So you might got from your travel to Riyadh. إذا لقيت نت رياض الحرم عمرك رحت الحرم؟ يا هو إنه بنروح هذا الحرم. You have to give him somewhere. He got the thing because he will always doubt the result that you are saying. Okay? Hepatitis A, B, and C. And I will يعني crush a lot over B. HIV. It's part of the screening. How many of you do syphilis? HIV آخر حدك. Syphilis is there. Just to tell you syphilis is there, uh, whenever you refer people to me, I will do syphilis. Uh, and people will ask me why. Well, it's part of screening. I pick a case once in a while. طيب, I cannot tell you that maybe last year everyone, every rheumatologist referred to me. Maybe I remember one case. طيب, but it's a simple test that you can do. And it's a simple screening test. IgG, we do it as you all know. IgG level is related to rituximab. As people can really check the level, if we give IgG once monthly for someone who have IgG deficiency, you can decrease significantly the reactivation of infection. So please, for latent TB, try to be away from skin test. Really, quantiferon, I know there is no much differences, but really reading skin test is becoming much difficult. And TB, uh, quantiferon, TB gold is really becoming a standard of care and much cheaper now test. It can be done. You should get it into your hospital if you don't really have it. It has a very good sensitivity and specificity. It's not used to be diagnosed, but really remember, I have seen some patients who will get skin test, and it was positive, and they are treated, and people will start another modality of treatment. They will do another skin test, and this is a disaster, because they will have a severe reaction, and they can have a very deep ulcer from having TB positive, positive skin test that is done twice. So I prefer always when you want to double check, before changing any agents to go about for quantiferon gamma. Latent TB, please remember, we always do INH nine months. Some people are doing rifampicin the four, 
and isoniazide and rifampicin for three months, but the more you put rifampicin, the more you can have nausea and vomiting, okay? So remember, it, it is a difficult drug for some patients. Up to 23% of patients can have severe nausea and vomiting. It can cause depression, rifampicin, it can, people will tell you, as soon as I see the drug, I will vomit, okay? So for latent TB, as you all know, it depends in your referral to me, it helps me a lot to know how urgent you want to start your drug. Because if it's very urgent, it helps me in telling the patient, we will start uh, anti-TB, uh, latent TB treatment in the same time. But if you have time for two weeks, then I will start my latent TB treatment. Two weeks later, you can start your treatment. It's much better for you to tell me how urgent if you are referring a patient, rather than I will tell the patient you have to wait for two weeks and then he tells me, the rheumatologist said we have to start it now. It just gives conflicting information. So if you tell the patient, please tell the infectious disease that you need to start now, or you can yourself start it, rather than we have com conflicting information, okay? Two weeks is a cutoff, one month is great before starting your treatment, okay? Uh, hepatitis. Just I want to re-emphasize on things because I really saw a lot of rheumatologists in screening they miss the core antibody. Really, the core antibody is very important. Some people, a lot of them, when they screen, they do the antigen. And if it's negative, they will push patients to the modality of treatment. But reality-wise, no, you need to get, because you have a patient, you have significant patient with the risk of reactivation, even after you end treatment, if they are core antibody positive, antigen negative. So in reality, if you want to push patients very well on the screening of hepatitis B, please do the antigen and core antibody. It really help us in trying to prevent the reactivation and have a closer follow-up or treatment if there uh, if their uh, PCR is positive. Etanercept, as you, uh, as you all know, the use of it, just remember, it is the least to have activation of TB. So the least between a lot of your modalities in treating, etanercept will have the least reactivation of TB compared to infliximab. Rituximab, as you all know, associated with a higher risk if the patient is having IgG deficiency. So it is a good test to do. You can see the differences between reactivation of infection if you do not have deficiency compared to someone who have IgG deficiency. So if you are having a hospital that can have the capability of checking IgG, it is really an advice to do it before starting rituximab because you can help those patients if they have IgG deficiency by giving them once monthly IgG. Bis adif li haratukum one information. If you have IgG deficiency, then you have to do all the deficiencies well. They go for an immunologist to look for other deficiencies before they get the IgG transfusion every month. Uh, this is Abacept. Uh, Abatacept. Uh, so it is associated with cutaneous candidiasis. I have seen a lot of patients with this one. I believe it is something that we have to tell our patients before, and just always, as I said, people come crying, say, I had patients who are really crying. I have male and males, uh, uh, my clinic is full of crying. Anyway, uh, 
they will come and say, this is candidiasis, but I am so happy about the drug. It controlled my symptoms. And I always reassure them that this cutaneous con uh, candidiasis, I can take care of it. So uh, always reassure your patients, this is expected. Don't let them be so worried about it. This is less than 1%. It's fine if it happened. We can treat it. Treatment is easy and simple. So reassurance is very significant for these patients. Jack inhibitor. Uh, since I came over the past couple of lectures, I've heard the Jack so much. And I think it's like the new Superman or something. But uh, anyway, remember, Zoster, 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 before Jack. Please remember, Zoster, pain, no rash, paid, no rash. Ma bit methyl, walla avon, arsilakli orthopedic, imkin rafat karton, no, zoster, it will come. Just give him follow up after two days, had lagiha wallaat. So just give him time, la tguli lil marheed, halla, ma indak shay, bukra al mufajaa, tomorrow, sah, it doesn't look good, la man yugulak, shuf ti liyana shtakat minu, shuf, shuf, zoster, Halas, if you are in doubt, if you are in doubt, give him treatment. So please, halas, just remember Allah Khalikum Zoster is, is very significant. And as I want just to, unfortunately, to say that JSK, because of what happened, uh, what happened because of Corona, uh, getting shingles uh, did not happen in the Saudi Arabia, let's say, that I'm a vaccine. Uh, vaccine had a zoster. It had been since years. People do not have it in their mind because the efficacy was around 50% if he's more than 70. It was around 71% if he's around 50 years of age. It used to be one dose. So this shinglix, really, it's amazing. The efficacy of it is between 97 to 98% of preventing shingles for the coming five years. It's very efficacious. It's taken into two doses. It's between one to two months apart, up to six months apart. The efficacy is so good. It's, yani, anyone who is in this room, who is my age, he should get it. Inshallah, if it arrives, well, you get shingles by any chance. Help. Again, so the recommendation is very clear. Two doses, it's clear cut how efficacy. So are we giving it to patients who are receiving chemotherapy? Yes. Are we giving it to patients who are getting, uh, 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 sorry, biological treatment? Yes. Uh, how good is their efficacy? Until now, yes, the efficacy looks like less than a normal individual, but still we can give it. Can we give it and start the treatment? Yes, you can give it and start the treatment after two weeks, then the second dose will be as a booster dose after a month or two. Vaccination, please try your best to vaccinate your patient. It really helps them from pneumococcal to hepatitis A to hepatitis B, all of your booster. It really helps vaccinating your patient before starting your, uh, your biological treatment or any treatment that you want. It really makes a difference in preventing secondary uh, infection. In the end, I really hope that I gave a useful information. Thank you really so much for the invitation. It is a great pleasure to be with all of you. Thank you very much.